So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can drive Rhinos, not Rhinos, Revit's adaptive family components with Rhino inside Revit or the plugin Rhino inside Revit, right? So we're basically going to cre be creating an adaptive component inside of Revit and then through Grasshopper in Rhino, we'll be defining the placement of that component. And the reason why I have Rhino open here is just to showcase the use cases for it. So for instance, uh, panelings, uh, panelings, the paneling system that you see here, of course, all of this is done inside of Rhino and not, not in Revit, but we will be able to replicate at least a portion of this inside of Revit. So that's what we're aiming for with this particular tutorial. So I guess without any, any further ado, we can, we can jump right into it. The first thing, the first thing to do is to actually in Revit create the adaptive family. So under families, I'll click on new and then under the templates, I'll find my English template here. I'll find metric, uh, because I'm from Europe metric adaptive. There we go. That's the template that you want to use generic model adaptive, either Imperial or metric doesn't matter. Hit open. And we will have our view here. So basically it starts with three planes here, uh, three helper planes. And to begin, we need to figure out, you know, what kind of panel are we gonna have? And the panel that I want is basically a rectangular frame um, that is dri driven by control points, by four control points. So that's the first thing that we're gonna do. I will click this point element tool right here, <clears throat> point element. And I'll just click, 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 click. Just place four points, right? Anywhere. Well, they, they should kind of form a rectangle. Once you're done that, you just hit modify. You click modify icon to finish the, the tool itself, right? Then I will select all four of these points. Holding down the control, you can add to selection. And I will make them <clears throat> adaptive right here. Make adaptive. There we go. After I've clicked this, you can see that now my points have planes associated with them and, and so on. And basically they now, as I will be creating a family inside of a Revit file, it's going to ask me for four points to pick, you know, with my mouse. We're not going to be doing that though. We're going to be using this uh, through Grasshopper, but that's later. Once this is done, we need to create lines in between the points to draw the actual rectangle. So I'm just going to use a line tool and just draw from this point to this point, this point. The snapping is a little bit awkward. I guess 3D snapping should be turned on like that, like that. I think I messed up. Let's see. I indeed did mess up. Let me delete and try again. Line tool, 3D snapping turned on. First point, second point, third point, fourth point, and first point again. Click modify. There we go. We have this little rectangle do that here. Then I will select this rectangle and I will make it into a reference line. And that's pretty easy to do. You just select the the curve or the polyline and here under identity data is reference line you tick mark this and then your uh, rectangle will become green you know because it's 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 a reference line i don't know what to what to tell you <laughs> then next up i need to so this is going to be the guide for my profile right as i said i want a rectangular frame going around this then I will add a point, but I will have it uh, being kind of placed on top of this curve. I don't remember the, the, the actual naming convention for it, but it's bas basically going to be a point that is always marked on the curve. So it becomes part of the, uh, of the curve. Hosting, I think it might be hosting. I might be wrong though. Don't quote me on that. You can see that as I'm uh, hovering my mouse over the 
with the point tool on, as I'm hovering my mouse over the curve, the point becomes smaller, right? I haven't clicked it yet. So the point becomes smaller. That means that it's going to be hosted on that line. I think it's hosted. Um, if you don't get that, make sure that your um, uh, that this tool is selected. Instead of draw on work plane, you are drawing on face. So make sure that this is selected and then just click here. There we go. All we need is one point. Hit modify. And we have it right here. So as you have the point hosted on the curve, now we can <clears throat> now we can actually create a profile, right? Or the cross section of the profile. So as I select this point, you can see the little plane here. And while it's it is selected, if we start drawing a reference rectangle from this point, uh, just make sure that uh, draw on work plane is uh, enabled rather than draw on face, draw on work plane. So, and also that 3D snapping is disabled. We start drawing from this point. I can draw out any, <coughs> apologies, any rectangle uh, that I want. So let's let's go for something like this, right? So we have ourselves um, cross profile here. Click modify uh, to finish the the drawing, and that's it, right? So now we have a rail and the shape that is going to be swept along the rail. How do we make this parametric more parametric than it? It is than it is right now because at this point i could just select both of these holding the control key and click create form and ta-da there's a frame right but i will not be doing that yet we want it to be parametric so i'm going to make a bunch of measurements aligned dimensions right so the first thing is this little guy right here i want to create uh dimensions for this so i'm selecting it and clicking align dimension, di bleh, aligned dimension right here. And then selecting this and this, uh, these two lines and dragging out the dimension 800. Great. Then I'll create one more between these two, drag that one out. That's 606, uh, 660. Great. We have these two dimensions. These will be controlled parametrically in a parametric way uh, once we're done we click modify then we will select this surface right here actually i could set the work plane right now uh, let's just do that so let me set the work plane and just select this uh grid uh, not grid but the, this plane right here right as my work plane just so that uh, drawing the dimensions is a little bit easier then I uh, create a aligned dimension between point 0.1 and point 0.4 in my case, drag it out, and another one between point 0.4 and point 0.3. There we go. Okay, we have four dimensions in total. Uh, let me click modify. Now I'm going to name them. So first let's start with the profile. I'll select the first dimension of the profile and here under labels i will create a new labor labor la label new label and i'll say that the name of the label is um profile a profile dimension a it's going to be instanced because i want the thickness to be able to change and is it reporting it should be a reporting para parameter there we go hit ok right then this is also going to get a label create how is it called actually create parameter yeah create parameter there we go instance uh, it's not going to be reporting parameter though it can also can only be a type it doesn't need to really be an instance because all of this is going to be quite static the thickness of it is going to be quite static and defined by us uh, through the family so i'm just going to say 
profile B. So profile B is going to be a static number that we will get access to right here under family types. If I click it here, I can see profile A is grayed out while profile B, I can type in whatever I want. So let's say 750 apply and you can see this one changes to 750, right? Then under here, um, these also need uh, parameters. Uh, so that one is going to be name just a instance reporting parameter. I'll talk about what reporting parameters are later once we start doing uh, scheduling of the uh, all of the elements that we've created. Hit OK. I have the this as a reporting parameter and then next one this that's going to be B. Instance reporting. Hit OK. There we go. So now under family types, I can see these four uh, measurements, right? That that are driving the sketch that we have here. And I can mess. Uh, well, I can't really change them here. I can only change them in um, inside of Revit, right? Inside of a Revit project, rather. Um, you'll, you'll see, you'll see. So as for profile, um, profile A, the value right now is set to 800, but actually I don't want the value to be static. I want the value, the thickness of the frame to react to the length of the frame. So I'm going to say, um, here i'm going to write it as a formula instead i can't write it as a formula i forgot um apologies i made another mistake but it's easy to fix so i created uh, profile a uh, this this uh, parameter i created it as a reporting parameter which means that we cannot edit it right here uh, under profile a you can see that you know, we, we can't change it. Uh, that is bad. That is wrong. We actually need this to be editable because it's going to be driven by a formula. So to fix that, I just select it, profile A, click on this edit, edit parameter icon right here. And under reporting parameter, I'm just going to untick this, hit OK. And now I can write a formula for this to be uh, tied to the size of A and B, right? For whatever these numbers are. So let's let's try out the formula. In brackets, I will write A plus B, right? A plus B divided by, let's go for 100, let's just see. So that is A plus B divided by 100. And you can see that automatically profile A updates. And now if I take, let's say this point and I move it around, you know, the bigger I make it, the, yeah, sure, slightly off axis, I don't care. Uh, the bigger I make this point, uh, sorry, this perimeter, the larger um, the frame here gets, the thicker the frame here gets. And this is, you know, somewhat parametric in my opinion. Um, to make this a little bit more, a little bit thicker, I will just make this into, uh, let's go for divided by 50 rather than 100. Yeah, that seems like a pretty thick boy. Um, perhaps even more. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. And then for the size of it, for the thickness, right now it, we're at 75 centimeters or 750 millimeters. That's way too much. So I'll go for 150 mil right here. Profile B, 150 millimeters, hit OK. And here we have it, right? And now this is when we actually create a form from this. So first select the rail, then holding the control, select the profile. And here, just click on create form. That's it. As easy as it gets. 
now you can select the form if you want you can change the material right here right but i'm just gonna keep it the the, the but I, i'll keep, keep it as a default so now if i click on load into project well it's gonna say no open project and also i really i don't even have a I, I haven't even saved the family so first i'm going to save it and then i'm going to create a project in which the family is going to be loaded in so let me click save under i'll just go for desktop create a new folder real quick revit adaptive adaptive uh, panel hit save gets get saved then go to file new project i'll go for metric architectural you go for whatever you want hit ok now we have it here and then since i already have this open i'm just gonna click on load into project there we go right now as i'm loading this into my Revit project, you can see that it's asking me to uh, give it basically a point. Well, it's not just one point, it's gonna ask me to give it four points, right? And then once I'm done with that, it's gonna ask me to give it four more points. I think I messed it up, yep, <laughs> I did, I really did. Let's go for, so the, the, the way you click matters, right? Let's click on modify, let's go for view, 3d view and just check this out well this one should should be gone but that's our little frame right and if if i were to right now i don't believe i can no no never mind i can change the points but if i were to make these much smaller see the smaller the the perimeter gets the thinner uh, the profile becomes the larger it gets the thicker it becomes so it kind of tries to keep a proportion going okay? which is what we want all right so we we do have a family now we need to actually uh, drive it with uh, rhino inside revit so Rhino inside revit let's click start and let's wait for this to load in and while this is loading in, I am going to be using, come on. I am going to be using this form right here that I used for my previous tutorial uh, in Rhino. Um, check that one out, All right? It's literally the, 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 previous <clears throat> the previous video in the video list uh, for which we used this as a driving, a driving force for creating um, this kind of a facade so this form is just a single mesh and I'm going to only be using a part of it inside of my actual Rhino inside Revit file right so let me start up my Rhino here and let's just migrate it from here to here that's going to be very easy we just control C control V and we have it here by the way if you want all of my files every single one that i do for these tutorials and i can delete that um if if you want every single file that i do for these tutorials uh consider supporting the channel on patreon patreon supporters get everything uh, literally everything that that is done and that is showcased including this of course so this is going to be a little bit too big i think well we will see now let's start up uh let's minimize that minimize that i said start up grasshopper and see what we can do there's a little bit too many windows open right now i think uh, the whole tower in one go while i'm recording the video would be too too much for um not Rhino for Revit to handle, so we're going to just do a portion of it. But even with that being said, let's create uh, reference in our mesh. Set one mesh. By the way, if you still want to follow along with, um, but you don't want to support the channel, 
a quick way of how you can create a mesh. Well, first of all, watch the previous video, goddammit. Second of all, um, it's under mesh tools, mesh box right here. You just draw uh, whatever size box you want, right? And you start control shift and deleting stuff and so on. And um, well, right now there's too many polygons here as well, but uh, and, until you end up having something like this. So it's literally just pushing points around until you get something like this. And this looks very ugly, but that's fine. Uh, because we will be using Catmull Clark subdivision on it. Bam. Like that. Let me hide this real quick. Now it's less ugly. And then we will be using Diagonalize. Diagonalize is basically it replaces every point with a set of, no, sorry, every edge with a face. So if I were to show it to you, you can't see it anywhere. Um, da, 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 display, mesh edges. There we go. This is a better, better view of it. See? So again, I, I feel like this, uh, this whole part would be too much to deal with. So I'm just going to uh, show selected. I'm, I'm just going to show the mesh and I'm going to remove a big chunk of it. Uh, uh, Control shift, by the way, to select individual faces and remove, or you can use a command called delete mesh faces. Mm, don't need that. There we go. There we go. There we go. Something like this will do just fine. And I can even delete all of these. Perfect. So as, as a testing area, this is going to be good. Right. So we have our mesh, um, diagonal mesh faces here. And I believe they will show up in Revit. Yep. There they are right there. Let's go back to Grasshopper. Why? Grasshopper doesn't want to. There we go. Uh, Grasshopper didn't want to show up. So then I need every single one of these mesh faces that I have here. Actually, I'm going to be showing it to you with Rhino because it shows the faces. I will want to use the adaptive component for them. So I will be using Revit. Uh, is it? Mm, I only remember it as a command. Add component in brackets adaptive. Control shift or control alt click. There we go. It's under build. Add component adaptive. Right? This one which asks us to give it points. Guess which points those are. Those are the four points, right? So we will be, uh, for every phase that we have here, and I know for a fact that every single mesh phase here, except these, of course, <laughs> except these, uh, other than that, uh, every other mesh phase is literally um, a rectangle, right? So I'm going to just say, give me all the discontinuities. This, or oh, sorry, first of all, give me the outer polygons for every phase. So boundaries, phase boundaries. There we go, phase boundaries. Do that. We basically get a bunch of polylines. Then we ask for discontinuities. There we go. We get all the corner points for every polyline and some will have three, some will have four, right? So I will just ask, uh, I will just ask for the ones that have four. So let's measure the list length. Oh, let me do this as well. Just so that you see the top like lab labels for these. Let's measure the list length 
and ask is it equal to 4 slash slash 4 and then with have having this answer yes or no we will be able to cull uh, cull pattern and cull uh, these uh, th these points with this equality right here cull pattern there we go so it removes basically the the branches or the polygons that only have uh, three points for instance this one one two three this triangle gets removed great now i know for a fact that every single one here also let's run a quick uh, clean tree clean tree component right here so this connects to the tree uh, where remove empty will be switched to true this removes all of the empty lists because even though we remove the polygons that like triangles basically um the list still has a, like an empty label in it so we just removed all of the empty stuff from the list by doing so this will just make sure that the adaptive component doesn't complain so now we have a bunch of data um, branches with four points in each branch J this one requires four points guess what we do connect it this way it still won't work because it doesn't know what what's the type of the adaptive component that you want to use and for the type you can either fish it out by doing um, categories i believe uh, or you can just right click it and here right click the t input and under here under model category category filter that's going to be under generic models oh let me do this generic models right here and then under family filter we will need to find our adaptive panel select that there we go and now it's starting to think right so now it's basically going through every single phase there and placing an adaptive uh, family component on each of the faces it takes a little bit of time so i will be pausing the video for it to you know stop having a heart attack <laughs> oh never mind i didn't even need to pause the video it was faster than expected 20 seconds to place all of these panels here but why am i showing it to you in rhino if we already have it in revit uh with some weird ex yeah some weird behavior on the corners mostly works mostly works so the curvature of the extrusions is not ideal uh, revit doesn't really like that the curvature i mean the off plane behavior of it it's not ideal revit doesn't really like that as much but it is working right we are getting the panels out so that was something i, I mean at this point where we're, we're kind of done uh every single panel has its dimensions a b profile a and the volume of course uh, so every single panel has that and which means that we can use this information to actually drive a proper what's the word we can use this information to drive a proper uh, proper proper uh, scheduling of the parts so that is going to be uh, what we will be doing next we'll be doing next all right so now let's talk about scheduling the actual you know every actual panel in a proper list so under schedule right here you need to right click and choose to create a new schedule with quantities we do that then we know for a fact that our adaptive component is a generic uh, model so let's find that here there we go generic models and generic model schedule you can call it whatever you want panel schedule or schedule whatever you wanna there we go 
Hit OK. And now we're in the schedule create creation menu, right? Where I can specify any type of a any type or any field that I wanted to actually give me as a list. So I'll go for families or family and type, maybe this one and count. You can see that I don't have A or B. My measurements are not there in terms of the the, the panel sizes themselves. And this is something that we will need to fix. But for now, family and type and count. Hit OK. Bam. So I know for a fact that, you know, neither one of these um, panels right here will have a duplicate of them simply because of the nature of, you know, how we create the geometry. Every single point is a unique point, um, but it's still, you know, having just a count there is, is nice. Uh, then to actually get our A and B parameters in here, we do need to go back to our family right here. <clears throat> Apologies. And we need to make the parameters shared. So let me explain this a little bit, a little bit better. If I go to family types here, I click on a parameter, which is right here and click on edit. You can see that here it's set to be family parameter cannot appear in schedules or tags. That is a no, no. I need this to become a shared parameter like that. So we will convert a to become a shared parameter. I will select, I choose to select because a shared parameter requires like a separate file on your server. And usually with BIM modeling, the whole company will have a single file that is used by, you know, everyone in the office. So uh, if, if you're working for a BIM company, you would be, um, you know, choosing a specific file. But in this case, we will be creating our own. You have not specified the shared parameter file. Do you want to choose one now? Yes, I do. And instead of browsing to it, I will be creating one. It's just a text file, so it's easy. Create. Um, I'll be creating one in my original folder, Revit Adaptive. I'll just call this shared parameters. Hit save. Now I have it here, right? And now I can just hit OK. There we go. <clears throat> so now I need to um, specify what's the parameter that I, I want to create. So I'll click on edit here and I will create a new group. And my group will be called panels. Right, panels and in that group I will create a new family uh, sorry new parameter called a right that's the measurement and it's gonna be discipline common sure length let's find length there we go length and hit ok and while I'm at it here I'll create a, one more parameter here and call it B <coughs> That's also going to be common length. Hit OK because we're going to be doing the same thing for the B parameter, right? So once I have this all done, I just select it as A. Hit OK. Now I can choose which one it is. Hit OK here. And you can see that now it fetches the parameter from the uh, text file that we have created. It's still a reporting parameter. We hit OK. And visually not much has changed but in reality uh, now it's referring to a txt file in this case on my computer ideally on the network on your company's network that it's fetching the parameters from then for b i'll click it shared parameter select b hit ok hit ok as easy as that right so now we just hit apply Hit OK. Uh, just to be on the safe side, I will save this. 
go back to panels scheduler go to fields edit and here hmm, i think it needs to recalculate doesn't it yeah, and also i need to save the project one second okay so i figured it out i accidentally forgot to uh click the load into project thing uh, <laughs> click load into project button so once you load this into project right it's going to ask you would you like to yo this is a new uh version would you like to override the old family version uh together with its parameter values and that's the button that you need to press once you've pressed that button it's going to refresh your uh families uh all, all of the families that you have here right adaptive components and those components will now properly report their length and width to the scheduler so under panel schedule under the schedule here right uh, now if we go to fields and click edit we can actually uh, see a and b these two fields have been created for us which i can easily add parameters add parameters hit ok and voila i have my measurements here for every single panel on this list that is that <laughs> that that is that um a few more things about um creating a structure for this of course you would need like a, a stronger beam structure behind it and so on and if you want to deal with beams you can drive the beams with um build add structural brace or add structural beam tool either one of these mm, sorry you know you can, you can you can use either one of these to um, add additional uh, supporting structures but as a starting condition i think this is it's pretty good right this is pretty good so if this is something that you find interesting and you would like me to keep going with um, this type of videos of rhino inside revit please uh, let me know in the comments because i'm not sure if uh, anyone's actually actually interested in in me showcasing this stuff but that that was it that was it for this this one again files available for patreon supporters please subscribe i'll see you in the next one later